Today's join my session video is going to be on the dead press to handstand, so the handstand push up. Um, I am going to show some variations. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I actually done this session yesterday, but I couldn't talk because I was at the gym and it was busy. So um, I'm going to go through what I done for a warm up, and my warm up is regressions of the dead press. So if you're not up to the point where you're working towards a dead press or 90 degree handstand push ups, I'm going to really talk about that seesaw effect um, and how it can be useful on your journey towards the dead press and also other handstand push-up movements. So I'm going to start with some really simple ideas to get you to understand it, but we can use that as your warm-up to the harder progressions. Um, I'm going to talk it through and I'm going to do the easier ones today. My session was actually yesterday, so I'm not going to do the harder variations because I don't want to do it two days in a row. But anyway, let's jump in with the actual movement and I'll explain as we go. Now ideally for today's session, we need something to put our hands up onto. So I'm gonna use a wooden box. You could use like the Ikea steps or any elevated surface. It could actually be a step. So you could do that. You just need to be able to dip your head the other side of your hands. So a very simple warm up or to, and to understand the idea of the seesaw method um, is to do a squat to crow. No, you can't do it with a dog. So, why don't you jump out of the way? Come on, come on. So I'm going to come down to a squat position and I'm just going to take my head below the point pivot point. So here the pivot point is the knees and the elbows. Um, so I'm going to shift weight forwards into that crow position. And my head goes below the pivot point and so my head goes towards the floor my feet lift up. So I'm using that like seesaw effect to lift the hips up and bring the head down. So I'm going to use that same concept but now up on the box. So I'm going to go between a kneeling position and a shoulder stand. So shoulder stand is where I take the collarbone towards the box and try and make the hips high, shoulders low so my knees come off the box. So now the pivot point is the hands. If I could take something lower it makes it easier. Okay, then I'm going to start to warm up the triceps, the shoulders and the arms to push back out of that position. So same idea from that kneeling position on the box, but now I'm going to lean forwards, collarbone to the box, I'm going to go inside the bottom of the handstand push-up. So I'm now going to play with the distance my shoulders are away from my hands. So I'm going to extend my shoulders away from the box, which is going to allow me to keep straighter so but take it down so like the bottom of your 90 degree handstand push up. I've also externally rotate the hands so it makes it a little bit easier to push the elbows into the side. And now I'm going to assist or cheat if you want to call it that to get up into a handstand. So I'm going to use a bit of momentum from that leaning forward and pushing up. I'm first actually going to do it in the crow to show you that version. So exactly the same as the box version, but now the pivot point is knees and elbows instead of the hands on the box. So I'm using that seesaw effect to help push me up. Same thing on the box, I'm going to take the shoulders out in front, I'm going to whip the shoulders down and push up to get me into a handstand now up on the box. So you see as I take the shoulders in front and bring them down, the hips come up and I can push at the end of that momentum. So in yesterday's workout, that's what I've done to start with, but instead of using one box, I use two boxes. So I'm standing in the middle of the boxes, but I do that same thing. I sweep down, and push out of it. So the rotation of the hips and the shoulders and the push helps me to get up. So the first couple of sets I've done, I've done with the lower boxes, but use that momentum push up. 
Then I went to a higher bot. And now I've done more of a straight body movement, that same thing, that rotation and push, but my hands are up higher, but I can stay in the straight body as I go up and as I come down. So the shoulders are always counterbalancing what the hips do. And then for the dead press. Now for the dead press, what happens now is instead of being able to take the head and shoulders below the hands, the floor stops you from doing that. So one variation would be to lay on top of the box and push up from there. Now that would allow you to dip your head and shoulders down, which would bring up your hips and be able to push out of it. So that would be one way to make the dead press a little bit easier. The other way you could go into a straddle position or shorten the lever arm in some way. So bend the knees or something. But again, you'll have to play with what variation you can do and not hit the floor. And because the dead press is coming from a dead stop, you're not actually using any momentum to get up, you have to generate a bit of power to kick up from the start. And you'll see when I do it, especially this first rep, that the feet sort of lead up first, then the hips, it's like I'm peeling myself up to create that momentum from the feet first. Ideally, and you'll see it on my second and third rep, I start to straighten the body and come up as one instead of peeling the body up, which is much harder. But you'll still see on my good rep, or my best rep, that I don't do that, um, I don't keep it dead straight. You'll see that my legs try and come up and you'll see one leg will come apart. I always do that weird thing where I flex one foot and point the other foot, just because that's maximum push and I'm having to peel the body up a little bit. Ideally, if you look at someone like mm -hmm. some monster do it, the body stays straight when you go up and back down. I notice on my way down, I get it nice. It's much easier to do it. So if you don't have the rep or if you really wanna work on quality and build up to it, um, work on some real slow eccentrics, but still using that shoulder to get right in front of the hands to counterbalance the feet coming down. So to recap, I'll get really used to that seesaw effect, start in that crow position, so squat, take the head down, hips up, and back again, and then progress it to something with the, with the hands raised up. Like I say, you could use a step, you could use an Ikea step or a uh, wooden box if you have it. You could use two boxes, you could use parallel bars, exactly the same idea. Just get used to taking the shoulders down and forwards and bringing the hips up and back again to get that rotation. One way would be to purchase yourself on the edge of the box and then go into like a peacock position. And now I take shoulders down, brings my hips up, brings my hips down, brings my shoulders up. Now obviously if you don't have a floor handstand push up, you want to be working the eccentrics and other stuff that I've been through in my tutorial videos for those. Normal deal, thumbs up and subscribe, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or send me a message. And I'll speak to you next time.